welcome back. Before we leave Candle Keep, let's discuss a bit about this place. I happen to have a Volo's Guide to the Sword Coast right next to me. Uh, for those who might not know, Volo is an important character and writer of the Sword Coast, a fictional one. He's a level 6 wizard, I think. And um, uh, his writings are interesting because he, he documented pretty much every location that is depicted in this game. He also, he also describes a lot of other ones that are not depicted in Baldur's Gate. And it will be interesting throughout the game to compare uh, his writings to Bioware's implementation. Let's start with Kendall Keep. Volo writes, The central highest fortress of the keep is surrounded by a terraced rock garden of many trees, where natural springs rise and bubble down the rocks in small cascades and pools. And in the, indeed, um, in this game they have represented the pools but they have certainly not represented many trees. There are three here, and there's a fourth one here. Awesome. Oh, I think that's a fifth one. So, let's assume five is many trees. These beautiful grounds descend to a ring of buildings along the inside of the massive outer walls. Guest houses, stables, like these, Granaries, which I think this could account for a granary as well. A warehouse, where we gloriously killed some rats. An infirmary, we visited here. A temple to Agma, right here. And shrines to Dener, Gond, and Melil. Now, when I read that, I originally thought that these were not represented, but then I looked closer. And actually, right here, there are three buildings which I could not have identified previously, and I think this is what Volo refers to. They do indeed looks like they do indeed look like small shrines. So it could be we that. Should not waste time like this. We are not wasting time. We are discussing lore, and it is a great activity. If you wish. But Zikel is right. Uh, we need to see Orion. So we will descend into those beautiful inner grounds. When conflict sweeps across the dales, the great lizards of the north shall descend with fire and fury. So saith the great Alondo. So saith the great Alondo. In Volo's words, the chanter leads the endless chant of Alondo's prophecies that wins its way around the citadel day and night, in continuous utterance of the sage's predictions. He is spelled in this duty by three assistants, the voices. The voice of the north, the voice of the east, and the voice of the south. In Baldur's Gate, there is also a voice of the west. Slight discrepancy with Volo there. So that is the chanter. And that is Teth Toril. First reader here. <clears throat> when the Lord of the land, I am very proud of you. Yes, I know. As I am sure Gorion is. So, as you can tell, it's impossible so to um, to distinguish what they are saying because they all they all speak at the same time. However, one of these prophecies turns out to be uh, very important in this game, but at this point we wouldn't know. And I won't spoil. Well, I will try not to spoil too much. Hey, uh, it's me, Imowen. And we meet with Imowen, a character which uh, will eventually prove central in the Baldur's Gate series, although not any not anytime soon. I'm surprised that stuffy old Garion let you away from your studies and chores. That old fiddle-faddle. I snuck off too, whatever that means. Old Puffguts Winthrop was looking for me, but I've got all day to do his chores. You have time for a story today? No, I can tell you don't. What have you been up to? I am sorry, child, but I am not to tell anyone what I am doing. I must go. You should not tarry about either. Winthrop will want the beds turned out after you are done in the stables. If you say so, you sure picked up a lot from old Garion. He never tells it straight neither. Good luck on your trip, er, uh, I mean, 
good luck with whatever you're doing. Wait, what do you know of my journey? Garan has said little to me and less to anyone else. Oh, I know. Old stick in the mud that he is, all worried about nothing, I'm sure. Better go now, because you've got a long ways to travel. Not, not that I would know, especially since I didn't peek at old Mr. G's private letters. No, sir. Better go now. Bye-bye. And she actually goes nowhere and stays there. So Imoen is uh, depicted as a quite a naive character. I'll talk more about her in a few minutes because we will have the occasion to meet her again. She does speak in some kind of Brit slang. I I don't understand like half of the expressions she she employs. If you do, it would be fun if you could uh, translate that into normal English for me in the comments because I don't really get what she said. Stick in the mud, puff guts, what? I snuck off too, what? Anyway, let's speak to Garion and see if he's more intelligible. But before we do that, can we enter the library? No, we cannot. There is no way to force this lock. And uh, even with the best lock picking skills you could have at this point, it is utterly impossible to open. So at, po at this point, there's nothing else to do but to talk with our foster father. Oh, my child, I am glad I have found you. This is very unnerving, I know, but you must trust me. It is very important that you pack your possessions so that we may leave Candlekeep immediately. Hurry, for there is no time to tarry. The keep is well protected, but not invulnerable. What could possibly harm us here? This place is a fortress and guarded beyond measure. Candlekeep is indeed a formidable obstacle for ne'er-do-wells, but it is not insurmountable. No matter how thick the mesh, at least one mosquito always finds its way through. No, my child, we must leave as soon as possible, for our safety and for that of our friends here. Well, we do know that uh, two would-be assassins have apparently have had no difficulty breaching the security here, so either they have serious problems about their security, or there is a greater force at work behind all this, who, uh, orchestrated the, ass the assassinations, and I would not be surprised that that is indeed the case. And this might be what uh, Grine is referring to. What should I bring with me on this journey, if you would just give me some clue as to what I will need? My dear child, you should know yourself well enough to purchase the gear you need. I have given you what I can spare, so hurry off to the inn and speak with Winthrop. Use your skills as a reference and buy what basics you must, though spend wisely. His prices are fair, but you may not have enough gold to purchase all that you would want. Please, father, tell me where we will be going. Alas, I cannot, for I have not truly decided yet. All that is certain is that we will be far safer on the move. Perhaps the woods might offer some secluded security, or perhaps the city of Ballersgate would offer cover amidst its teeming throngs of people. I do not know where we shall end up, but I have a, a few friends here and there. Hmm. I will think on this. <laughs> Great. So we're embarking on a journey and we have no idea where we're going. All that we know is that we are on the move and that is better than staying here. Well, with the two assassination attempts in one day, I guess he might be right. I'm ready to go right now. I already packed all my positions. Listen carefully. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Deep down, Lord, Lord, Lord. 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 